Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was Mission Solano. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as on the YouTube video itself on Bun. You gotta subscribe. I think people have subscribed. Right now. Well, some of them haven't, you know? Because yeah. we, sometimes we get more views than subscribers, so it's yeah. clear that there's some lurkers out there. Put your boots to the ground and put put your money where your mouth is and, and subscribe your, to this. Put your network. fingers on those mouses. Get the, start to get clicking, baby. Get, get to clicking. Get, get to click clicking. Down. What's the what's the holdup? Let's go to the first question. Would you like to go to Gramtown first? We can go to Gramtown. This is from Isel Viaraza. If even a house of God can be infested with a demonic presence, is there any place where they can't get into? Yeah, yeah. now what do you say <clears throat> about that? Because you know, we've been told, oh, if you got if you got Jesus and God looking out for you and you got your little holy water, um, then you should be fine. Demons can't get you. But if we have a demon who's making a little home out of a, a house of the holy, well, then what? Then what? Well, I would say that uh, demons really don't have uh, any limit to where they can go. They're pretty natural beings. They could pretty much go wherever they want. I thought, though, that uh, a church would be a place they couldn't get into because they don't have jurisdiction there. Yeah. However, uh, I guess not. Uh, is there, are there laws for de- is there- like I don't a- know demon law. I don't know any of that stuff. I'm just making assumptions here. We're all just taking educated guesses. I guess demons could go anywhere now. Yeah. They have a little demon passport, grants them entry into any place. Scary. <laughs> Yeah. Once again, we this is these are guesses. We don't know. We don't know. So, um, but Demon, that would be my guess. Very elusive, demons. Let's, Let's go to YouTube. Pick up your game over there on YouTube. How about that? Uh, this comes from Lucy V on uh, YouTube for the postmortem. Props to you, Phantasma Hermanos, for actually using Spanish. It seems like paranormal investigators never speak in languages that the spirits they're looking for would understand or know. Hashtag Phantasma Hermanos. Hashtag Wheeze but in Espanol. Uh, Uh, Hashtag uh, uh. Bugara on a spiritual level. Hashtag Shane's muy loco. That means you're you're really crazy. I'm a crazy guy. The idea of it wasn't like, let's speak authentic Spanish. It was more like, let's talk to these spirits in a way that they can understand us, right? Yeah, I guess because if I was a ghost and someone came in yelling in another language, I might be like, I don't know what's going on there. But if someone was just like, hello, that's enough for me. I'll pop out. Well, the thing is, I'll pop out. if I'm like in my house, right, and I'm yeah. a spirit, and I don't know I'm dead, right. let's just paint that. Spirit. You don't know you're dead. That's the canvas I'm, I'm painting I'm seeing right it. Now. Okay. It's beautiful. Good, good, good. Now live in it for a second. I'm there. Great. Okay. Now, you're living in your house. Maybe you're popping on idol or something. I don't know. Somebody walks into your house, starts speaking a foreign language, screaming at you with a, a little radio. Yeah. You're going to at least say something like, what are you doing in my house? What are you doing in my house? <laughs> like, I'm going to call the police. You know, something's going to come out of your mouth. You're not going to just sit there silent. Yeah. So, I guess in that respect, it doesn't matter that you're speaking their language, but it's nicer that you could uh, try to connect with them on a personal level. At I saw least a lot making of people, an, an, an attempt. An attempt, right? Mm-hmm. I saw a lot of people out there uh, mocking us for our, our accents. And you know what? Hey. I, I think you're missing the point. You know, we weren't trying to be a, a legitimate Spanish speakers. No. I know I am a half Mexican man and I should probably know that. Uh, I mean, I don't know any Polish or German. Or, you, know. you know mustard. I do know mustard. Zenf. Kartoffeln. Let's take it back into Garden Town. <laughs> <laughs> Here it comes uh, from Broken Down Wings. For postmortem, couldn't it had been cold in the chapel because it's probably drafty due to being an old building and not because ghosts or demons or whatever, hashtag Shaniac. You know, I just threw that one in because it's a classic Shaniac. Doing, doing, blaming it on the, on the wind. Yeah, that's a starter kit. And a draft. That's day that's one funny. Shaniac right there. Yeah, and uh, frankly, you're using your brain. Which I know is a horror trope. Like, we don't know if ghosts make a room colder. They're said to. I had a certain feeling, and it, it aligned with it being all of a sudden very chilly. Do you think so a ghost just has like a, a, a spectra, like a, just a, a spooky uh, ghost thermostat? They just sort of like crank it down and go. <laughs> No, no. I, yeah. think, I think their aura, their energy, just kind of sucks the... I think they, they do what they can to suck energy out of anything. Interesting. And that's like, well, at least that's the science behind it. Like they, yes, that's they the use, science behind okay, it. Okay, shut yeah. up. But they use like, <laughs> e, they use EMF, they draw energy from that. Maybe they could draw energy from 
the uh, the energy present in temperature. That, that's why they would sap it out I and see, it get I cold. See. That's the theory. Uh, should I go to Facebook? Yeah. This is actually somewhat related to what we just talked about. Great. This comes from Olivia Selman, something that has been weighing on my mind for quite a while in the context of spirits is how Ryan defines them as energy in almost every episode. Oh boy, buckle up, this gets, this gets crazy here. You're gonna like this. In quantum particle theory, it has been shown that the presence of an observer affects the results of an experiment. That is to say, fundamental particles like electrons behave differently depending on whether the results of the experiment are being recorded or not. Crazy, right? That's, yeah. That's nice. Um, in chemistry, it is electron transference, transference that absorbs and releases energy and dictates the energy of molecules and moreover, anything in the world. With all this in mind, if spirits truly are composed of pure energy, would it be crazy to hypothesize that they are subject to the observer effect like electrons? This would explain why people only seem to have crazy ghost encounters when cameras aren't rolling. Just a strange thought from a person who uh, with a quite scientific way of thinking of things, who is still open to the idea of the supernatural. Hashtag Shaniac, hashtag Bugara. I gotta say, um, you're out of the Shaniacs. You're done. You're using wow. the You're done. I think there's a, a bit too much extrapolation on that one. They're really taking wow. some leaps. Because I think that boils down to sort of an atomic level when you're talking about the observer effect. I don't think that applies to like... Now, mind you, th they didn't say this is, this is gospel here. They said it might explain. Yeah, I'm saying you're out. Well, yeah, they were trying to bridge the I want the you game. to mail me your Chaniac membership card. That doesn't, that doesn't exist. It, it, you don't know about them, but they're out there. Yeah. And I will... Is it written in crayon? This is nothing personal, but I'm gonna open up that mailbox, take your little letter out, open it up, look at your little card, I'm gonna rip it to pieces. I'm gonna throw it in a fire. You know, that's fine because there's plenty of uh, room over here on the Bugara train. And, and frankly, I'd like you to move over there. No, that's good. We're heading right to Truth Town. So what she was trying to do here is she was trying to, uh, you know, reach across the aisle, so to speak, and bridge the gap and, you know, have this really nice moment where we could decide, oh, maybe this isn't the truth, but it's possible that we could coexist here. That's a repulsive notion. Let's head back to Graham Town. This one is from Guts Less. Hey boys, weather permitting, I'm going to visit Old Alton Bridge this Halloween. What are you, you mean? You mean our bridge? That's right. Shane and uh, Ryan's bridge? You got anything you want to say to the goat man? Why um, didn't you pick this question if they didn't refer to the bridge by its actual nomenclature? You know, they're just still getting out there. I think they're, they're sort of locking down that Wikipedia. It's Shane and Ryan's bridge. As for what you should say to the goat man, uh, I don't know. He's probably too busy sobbing. And let's go to Facebook. Whip it up, bro. This comes from Rana Azul. Postmortem. Ryan, that was the most scared I've ever seen you in an episode. What caused this? Can you describe what you felt in the chapel? Also kind of disappointed because we weren't able to see the ghost bear, LOL. Hashtag Booniac. Is that the, the hybrid, I guess? I guess so. And you, you, you resent that, right? Uh, you know what? I've, I've actually been thinking about it and I'm ready to sort of lighten up on these, these, uh, cow these cowards in the middle. That's, you kind of contradicted yourself from five minutes ago. Yeah, know? I said I've been thinking about it. I'm feeling uh, charitable. Can you describe what you felt in the chapel? Pure fear and terror. I was, I did not like that chapel one bit. Turn off those lights. Can you? Objectively, looking down the chapel, could you not admit it was pretty spooky looking? It was spooky because I, I don't think, I feel like a lot of our uh, solo investigations are in confined spaces. Mm -hmm. If you're in a giant area, like it, there's a lot to take in. Yeah. There's a lot of things that could be going on. I feel like that's, it just plays with your nerves a little more. The, and the reason why I was so nervous about this is because it was a demonic investigation in a church. Yeah. Whereas when you know when we're investigating ghosts, yeah, it's scary. It's going to challenge your your you know your belief of the laws of physics if you see a ghost. But that's really what it's going to do. That's like the most it's going to do. That that's the the worst thing that could happen. Yeah. Whereas like a demon could actually harm you. True. What are you going to do? Shut up. Here's from Ella K <laughs> over on Graham Town. Important question: Did y'all get Taco Bell afterwards? We actually didn't. We didn't. We thought about it. And we, mi no, we didn't think about it. We missed the cutoff. We missed the cutoff by Th three minutes. moments. Yeah. Because cause... Ryan was doing his solo investigation. So I was like, come on, hurry it up, bro. Cause it was maybe a mile away. Oh, man, there would have been nothing better than after. Cause like once we have those a cheesy individual... gordy. Oh yeah. Individual <laughs> investigations. Once you get out of that, you, there is a, an enormous release 
of energy and just tension, you just feel such a, like a wave of a relief yeah. washes over me. Yeah. And I uh, mean, uh, yeah. And, and it's usually better to, just like to go with that. The, the adrenaline of finishing shooting, you're just like, all right, let's do it. Let's get back. A lot of times we're in the middle of nowhere yeah. where, you know, there's not a lot of food options late at night. Um, so the fact that there was a Taco Bell a mere mile or two away was... It felt like it was meant to be, and yet it was taken from us rather cruelly, I thought. Yeah. This is not sponsored, but it can be. It can be. Hit us up. Please. You know? Please. I'm, I'm willing to slap my face on a cheesy gordita I crunch. I am begging you. Please. I'll, I'll get a tattoo. Of a, a, <laughs> of a CGC? All right, well, let's take it over to Facebook. Okay, this comes from Marlene Ramos. Uh, for postmortem, as a Spanish speaker in minute 742, I can kind of hear the audio saying, no puedo decir, which means I can't say, after you asked, what is your name? Did you hear that? By the way, love y'all Spanish, hashtag Shaniac, hashtag Bugara. See, that, now she appreciated the effort here. Yeah, um, thank you. Call us to nombre. Huh? I don't know about that. That's about as much of a stretch as it usually is. <laughs> I, that's hilarious, because there was, <laughs> no, that literally not... was like, Bleh. No, no. Beep, beep. The, what, what was that? You know, in evidence review later, when I'm actually reviewing the audio, I could, I could then make the better judgment call. But hearing that now, it just did sound like, as you would say, Bleh. Bleh. I mean, but you're thinking like a, like a Bugara, so that's good. Mm. Let's go back to Gramtown. This is from Elizabeth Ivy. Shane is starting to believe. Is that why he said you'd have better luck with the spirit box outside that room? I said he would have better luck with the spirit box outside the room because it's a like a radio, and uh, those work better. Except that theory is actually uh, not that accurate because we've done it in places where we're underground and it's well, some places have better reception than others. That's what I'm saying. That's all I mean, I'm saying. We've also done it in places where there would be reception and it, nothing comes through, so. I think, I think it depends. We, we should bring a radio with us and see how, that's what we gotta do. You're always not a fan of testing these things out because I know your little, your little castle of lies would crumble. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming to my side here on this issue. That's good of you. Uh, you're, take, you're gonna take that as a win? That's, I just took that, I just took that as a win. <laughs> you can have it, buddy. Yeah, good, I'm gonna take it. I know. That's me taking it. Okay. Put that in, save it for later. Hey Ryan, what's coming up this week on BuzzFeed Unsolved Supernatural? Uh, how could I talk about this one without giving it away? Uh, I won't tease too much about the location itself, but I will say at the end of this episode, the individual investigation, for the first time, rattles one shade of day. Yeah, really did. Um, <laughs> it's the only time I've ever had any adrenaline on any of these shoots. <laughs> you answered that so matter-of-factly yep. and just stoically. Yeah, it really did. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I talked about how much I wanted to put Ryan in peril this season, and you know what? A mission accomplished. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday and then send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, the Unsolved Instagram page, as well as commenting directly on the video on Bun. And I'd just like to take a moment to let everyone know, when I had a prepared statement last week, that was me saying I really got to, you know, I'm not doing the hot dog of this season because I really want to make sure that I, I steer this story in a direction that is satisfying. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to... Want me to throw you a life preserver here? Well, yeah, it feels, like you're, it feels like you're drowning a little no, bit. No, I'm not drowning. I just want people to know that when this thing comes back, you're going to have music, you're going you to have things, dancing, and you're going like to have... This, it doesn't make them have any more gravitas. And you're going to have Bugara Guitarra. I guarantee it. Okay, that's a strong promise. I guarantee make. it. I did see a fair amount of people say, I think Shane has writer's block. They saw, they read between the lines. I don't. They saw right through your little- You think time your, travel's hard to write? They, they saw the right through your little dog world. and pony show. It's the easiest thing in the world. Cute statement. You go back in time, that's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm gonna finish this thing out. I just wanna make sure, you know, we're very busy this season and I, you know, I got, <laughs> I'm definitely not stalling. Translation, Shane is, uh, Shane has a case of writer's block. He's pacing around his room at night, wondering also, you know, how he's what? gonna- After that last finale, I was very drained. Do you know how much I put into that? Didn't look like a lot. So much. Anyway, <laughs> this is gonna be good. I promise you, I won't 
I won't lead you astray. I didn't, I'm not dragging you along here. He's just feeling a little lazy lately and he didn't want to put any work in to something that required very little work to begin I with. I want to put the most work into it, but you know, we're going to be out of town a lot next week. Yeah, because we weren't, we weren't, we weren't should out of we town tease, in past seasons. Should we tease next week's postmortem? There's something special about it. Oh, the live post morning? Oh yeah, are we just saying it? It's live. It's gonna be live. I tweeted it out already. Ryan so. tweeted it. It's gonna be live. Tune in, it's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah. All right, well. Oh, we were Grey Vision, by the way, if you didn't notice. The, the stupid ass uh, guy from the Avengers that does nothing but gets stabbed and bring the team down. That guy's a loser.